Joining us tonight to discuss uh, the key uh, congressional hearings and their potential impact leading up to these midterms, Sarah Carter, investigative reporter, Fox Business contributor. Sarah, great to have you with us. Uh, great to be with you, Leo. Baker, uh, he is creating all sorts of problems from Rosenstein, not the least of which uh, Mark Meadows, the uh, chair of the uh, Freedom Caucus, calling for his resignation forthwith. Uh, that means whatever they've heard, uh, Meadows at least has had a belly full. Not only uh, Congressman Meadows, but a number of other congressional uh, representatives that were there to hear Baker's testimony also feel the same way. Lou, it was explosive testimony again today. I know just a little bit of what happened behind those closed doors. And apparently Baker, when asked over and over again, the majority of questions were actually directed about Rod Rosenstein, um, the meeting with Andrew McCabe and Lisa Page, who is also an FBI attorney who has resigned since, right. along, along with McCabe, who was fired. They asked him directly about Rod Rosenstein. And when they asked him specifically, how did you know, how did you know for certain that, you know, McCabe believed Rosenstein was serious? And he said to them, by his words and by his actions, by his words and by his actions. Mm -hmm. So apparently the FBI actually mm -hmm. conducted and did some kind of actionable thing with regards to what Rosenstein was saying. And I think this is what, you know, Congress is so upset about. We know based on Baker's testimony that that they withheld, the FBI withheld exculpatory evidence related to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court and the Carter Page FISA. And now we know, based on Baker's testimony, that Rod Rosenstein was apparently serious about recording the President of the United States secretly, which is the reason why so many congressional uh, members are saying, look, and especially Meadows, who's come out publicly to say it, resign right now. This has gone too far. Your, your move in May of 2017 to secretly record the president crossed a line. But they're obviously going to give him a chance to speak next week if he shows up. Now, that chance to speak next week, and if, uh, if I may, uh, on, on what you just said, uh, there seems to me to be an issue here that is still not resolved. Uh, James Baker is not in this uh, with clean hands himself. Uh, and right. uh, and the and certainly uh, Andrew McCabe is not. We, this is going to be a very difficult issue to be sorted out because it seems each one of them has culpability here, one way or another. And what has been rampant political corruption at the top of both the DOJ and the FBI? Uh, your thoughts? Great points, Lou. I mean, I think they're looking at a number of things here. One, we know for certain that James Baker, according to uh, sources very close to him, as well as James Baker himself, did not care much for Rod Rosenstein. Yeah. He was very close to James Comey. Uh, Baker was a confidant of his and was very angry when Rod Rosenstein actually wrote the memo that uh, allowed the president to basically act on his wishes to fire, to fire Comey because he wasn't no. doing his job. And, and as well as, you know, we know Andrew McCabe was very close to Baker as well. Yeah. But according to the people that heard this testimony, one had nothing to do with the other, really. I think the only thing that it has to do with Look, is that Baker wasn't afraid of throwing him under the bus. Yeah, I, I, I think perhaps eager is another way of looking at it. But <laughs> yeah. uh, Nellie Orr to, uh, to testify, and apparently uh, without uh, any constraint, uh, her, her husband will be in jeopardy if she uh, does, if she happens to in any way contradict his testimony. Uh, the uh, Orr family is having a very tough time, and they seem to be at the nexus of nearly all of the skullduggery uh, that has right. been carried out uh, by at least certain elements of the Justice Department uh, and the FBI leadership. That's right, because we know that Bruce Orr was being used as a back channel by the FBI to get information from Christopher Steele after they basically fired the former, you know, uh, a British spy for leaking to the media. And we also know that Nellie Orr, who was working for Fusion GPS, long time, I mean, she speaks Russian so you... fluently. She's worked in the Soviet Union at the time it was the Soviet Union. She was a professor that taught Russian. I think she has a so lot we, of connections to So we finally have US collusion and, and uh, if you will... Uh, a, a, a little uh, a, a confluence, you know, we have all of the people doing the investigation uh, for the FBI, the uh, Justice Department and leading it. Uh, they are the ones who have connections to <laughs> Russia. Uh, it, it is the most preposterous moment 
that anyone would even contemplate in letting this uh, so-called special counsel, Bob Mueller, continue. Uh, and the president's right. It's a witch hunt. And it's, 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 anyway, it's yeah, frustrating. You're absolutely right. And, and it is frustrating. Gonna... And every bit of evidence points towards them, not towards President Trump or the campaign colluding. And uh, don't forget, we've got a few uh, members of that Senate Select Committee who have a lot of explaining to do, including the vice chair himself, uh, that is Senator Mark Warner. Uh, uh, yeah, so absolutely. That, that is for next week. How about it, Sarah? <laughs> Thank you, Lou. I, I'd love to be back. You Thanks. got it. We'll see you then, Sarah. Thanks so much. Thank you.